lead when clearly the establishment is doing everything they can to try to sideline you. I mean, I mean, look, you clearly have more support than John Kasich. Clearly, you should be in the debate. So, so you're probably doing the right thing to not be in the debate so that you can at least make a big deal out of it and actually be heard. What else can you do, can we do to try to get you back in there uh, to win this nomination or to inject good ideas? Because, you know, Trump could do some faux pas, fall out, and then we get Jeb Bush, God forbid. You know, I think one of the things about the disconnect between the grassroots and, you know, the establishment Washington Republicans is I put forward an amendment about a year or so ago, and I said that we shouldn't give any foreign aid to any countries that persecute Christians, any countries that put to death Christians who um, interfaith marriage or people who convert from Islam to Christianity. They, if they have laws on their books that says you are put to death, they shouldn't get any of our money. I've yet to meet one American outside of Washington who is opposed to that, is opposed to my amendment. And yet in Washington, when we voted on it, 18 senators voted to continue sending foreign aid, even if the laws of the country we were giving the money to were to persecute Christians. And so that's, it I think, just shows you how far apart we are, the grassroots from those in Washington. The Federal Reserve is a private banking cartel. The yeah, Fed is a sometimes very independent uh, organization. What should be the proper relationship between the chairman of the Fed and a president of the United States? The Federal Reserve is an independent agency. There is no other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take. They print our money and then loan it to us at interest. The IRS is their collection agency. So long as that is in place and there is no evidence that the administration or the Congress or anybody else is uh, requesting that we do things other than what we think is the appropriate thing, then what the relationships are uh, don't frankly matter. Jeff Duncan says he saw IRS special agents using semi-automatic rifles at a gun range. Now he wants answers to why the agency needs that type of firepower. Is this global governance at last? Is it one world? The central bankers in charge. Know your history and you will know your enemy. Infowars.com. I'm not gonna sit here. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well, and he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a, a workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to give my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all on InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which what I would have never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity. Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet. I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key in ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that 
uh, here lately, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu, and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago, I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes, and now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things and if it has those kind of effects for me i know that it will do great things for you so just try super male vitality i promise you you'll love it and finally let's look at anthony gucciardi infowars.com reporter he also works with dr group and others helping develop the newest most cutting edge high quality supplements let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the steiners and remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena, and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle. And Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll-free 888 -253 -3139. Jakari Jackson reporting for InfoWars.com. Today we are in the city of Austin, Texas. We're on our way to see printable gun pioneer Cody Wilson. Now you guys may recall Cody, he made headlines many years ago for his production of the Liberator, the first 3D printed pistol. Since then his technology is advanced and he actually has a shop that we're going to see where he assembles what is known as the Ghost Gunner. It's a mill that allows you to make, among many other things, a lower receiver for an AR-15. So we're going to go check out his shop and see what he thinks about the recent reasonable gun control proposals made by the president. Okay, so we're here with Cody Wilson and he's going to walk us through Defense Distributed and show us how he fabricates the ghost gunner. Cody? Hey, Jakar. Yes. All right, you're in the shop, small shop. Let's come to the back. Assembly line model. As long as you're happy with the machine looking like this. Okay, that's what it looks like. That's what we make. There's no variation. Everything's the same. It's the Model T of uh, personal assault weapon fabrication. We start with uh, empty shell over here. Machine proceeds around the assembly line in a U. Comes back down through here. Makes a lot of uh, takes a lot of sub assemblies from the back, which are which are uh, inserted as it goes. Gets fitted out with electronics, power supply. We do a little bit of uh, setup code testing. Comes off the line. Goes out the back door to your house. So what exactly does the Ghost Gunner do? Uh, the Ghost Gunner is, in actuality, just a mill. Just a very tiny computer-controlled mill. A uh, computer tells a moving end mill in space where to go, how to carve out a piece of aluminum that you can kind of bolt down to a work surface. It is previous century technology. There is nothing in it, of it, that it is itself revolutionary. But when you ask me, what does the Ghost Gunner do? I don't really think about the milling. I think about what it does to the liberal imagination, what it does to the elitist gun control imaginary. It destroys it. That's what the ghost gunner really does. And now secretly, in garages in a neighborhood near you, someone may or may not be manufacturing an AR-15 in their garage. The ghost gunner has a price tag of $1,500 and sports a very long waiting list. Cody's machine has the ability to take a hunk of billet aluminum known as an 80% lower receiver and mill it into a principal part of an AR-15 rifle. But as one might expect, not all politicians are on board. This again is the engine to the high-powered and semi-automatic assault weapons that you see displayed here today. With that, the lower receiver, an individual can buy this $80 to $100 online. This doesn't have a serial number, and it doesn't require a background check. All the person has to do, go to someone who has a drill press. You are a self-proclaimed anarchist, correct? Yeah, look, I, I'm anti-state now, all the way. Does your philosophy further your technology or your drive for technology? My technology furthers my philosophy. I'm not sure if the philosophy is furthering the technology that much. I mean, our, our insight is that change is tool-based and can be technically based. Uh, but I hope that I don't lapse into a certain kind of arrogant technicism. 
In 2016, President Obama made headlines by outlining plans for biometric, GPS-tracked firearms. We need to develop new technologies that make guns safer. If we can set it up so you can't unlock your phone unless you got the right fingerprint, why can't we do the same thing for our guns? Uh, do you have any plans to make a fingerprint scanner for Ghost Gunner? Uh, not at all, Jakari. I, I want every Ghost Gunner to look like its brother. I want to take as, as little information uh, as legally necessary to manufacture, to ship. The, the capital stock of guns in this country will never be converted into these new guns, and they, we will never see a similar capital stock of these biometric-enabled guns. And there is no way of even demanding, under any statutory authority present, that same level of biometrics and whatever, smart technology in my machine. My machine is a milling tool. It's like saying, well, should your hammer have, you know, fingerprint technology? It's the same thing, no. Well, let me ask you, how long until a product that comes out of a ghost gunner is military-grade technology? Look, I'll answer the question that it's military-grade now. Commercial low receivers for AR-15s are machined aluminum, often billet aluminum. You're getting the exact same product off of the ghost gunner to military specification because we, we base our fixturing and our software around the military spec of the AR-15 lower. So you're getting functionally, materially identical components to the military component. Now, Cody, you went to UT. Did you study engineering? What did you study there? No, man, I, I studied law at UT. This is, uh, a lot of the guys in this shop don't come from engineering backgrounds per se, but we think that the computer revolution, the digital revolution, they impart certain abilities or the ability to educate yourself in a way that formal education uh, tricks you into thinking that you, you can't be educated. So everybody that came into this shop didn't necessarily have a hands-on machine type shop background, uh, but they've got it now. Before the Ghost Gunner, Cody first shot to fame with the production of The Liberator, a crude single shot 3D printable gun. He used his skills and equipment to print things such as magazines as well. So consider this, a CAD file uh, containing the information for a 3D printable weapon system. If that file was seeded by 30 people, let's say, um, as long as there's a free internet, that file is available to anyone at any time, all over the world. Now, a gun can be anywhere. Any bullet is now a weapon. But Defense Distributed's goal isn't really personal armament. It's, it's more the liberation of information. It's about living in a world where you just download the file for the thing you want to make in this life. This machine did a all the principal Liberator components for the Liberator trials back in early 2013. Uh, it's an old 2003 Stratasys SST machine. I'm involved in a large lawsuit against the U.S. State Department that's now in the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, and that is fighting them over their, their total blanket ban on my posting of our work here, our research, and our R&D efforts to the Internet. They've literally targeted no one else in history uh, you can go to the Air 15 forums, you can go to any kind of CAD repository you want. The gun files are all over the internet and have been for years. DOJ got back to Congress after uh, the Anti-Terrorism and Effective Death Penalty Act and said, oh, look, sorry, people can post bomb plans to the internet, free speech. But somehow after Liberator, uh, the Obama administration was so embarrassed that they sicked the State Department on me and told me to prove it, how bad I wanted to do this kind of work. With this, you're printing the lower receivers, correct? But for a 1911, how, how fully functional would a 1911 be coming out of a machine like this? In the very same way that you're not producing an entire AR-15 on this machine, you're producing like the receiver. In the 1911, there's a frame component that can be milled out of aluminum, which is also sometimes considered to be the regulated component. So we're talking about creating the regulated components of guns as much as we're talking about being able to meaningfully manufacture them. So if I can make my own AR-15 receiver, I sidestep the entire FFL registration serialization network and I can assemble my own private AR-15. But I don't make every single component of that AR-15 on this machine. I want to read you this quote from Kalashnikov, of course, the maker of the AK-47. I didn't want to design a weapon that was going to be used in widespread fratricidal war. I only wanted to help protect my country's borders. Now the Ghost Gunner, the Liberator, all this stuff is in its infancy. Let's say the technology advances and becomes more widespread. There are more than a few bodies attributed to the technology. Do you foresee a day when Cody Wilson will share a sentiment similar to Kalashnikov? I share Kalashnikov's sentiment now. Uh, the rest of his sentiment was that he, uh, 
He said, don't blame me for, for this technology and, and, its, and its use. Blame the politicians. Blame the nation states in these large protracted wars, right, which are the, really the consequence of the behavior.